Hi everybody, it's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com and today we're coming to you live from Abu Dhabi at the Heart Valve Society Conference and I am thrilled to be with <laughs> Dr. Marty Leone who is the professor of medicine at Columbia University Medical Center in New York. Dr. Leone, thanks for being with me today. Thank you, Adam. And uh, Dr. Leone, so you know, is really a living legend uh, with what he has done, interventional cardiology, and uh, all the great things we've been hearing about TAVR, the lowest trial, he's the national principal investigator on that with Dr. Michael Mack, I, if, I, if I'm right. It, this is a gift to have you here. We, I've heard so many wonderful things, so thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Adam. It's a long way from New York City to Abu Dhabi, but I'm thrilled to be here with you. Yeah, well, thank you. And so, Dr. Leon, I just mentioned to you, we've been getting patients questions mm -hmm. coming in nonstop from all around the world and obviously many of them have to do with TAVR. Mm -hmm. And so why don't we jump into the first one that came in from Francis Pontbriand who emailed me, hey Adam, I'd love to hear about the latest use of TAVR to treat aortic insufficiency. I'm a terrible surgical candidate and I'm presently moderate to severe AR. So my time is coming sooner than later. I know there are some prototypes in Europe, but I wonder if anything is going on in the USA. So Francis, I have some interesting and potentially good news for you. Um, first, yes, there's some work that's now ongoing in patients that are high risk for surgery, but have severe aortic regurgitation. There have been some off the shelf cases that have been done with the commercially approved aortic valves by simply oversizing them, assuming the anatomy is okay. So there's been some work in that area, but there are some dedicated valves that are being used predominantly in aortic um, regurgitation that are being studied as we speak. One in particular is called the Jena valve, which was originally developed in Europe, now is in the West Coast in California, and they're doing an HDE study and they're near completion, um, completion of that trial. There are about a half dozen centers in the United States that are still implanting patients, and the FDA has already granted what we call a breakthrough device exemption that would allow them to have a facilitated opportunity to have this valve used in patients with high risk aortic regurgitation. So we think that this is one of the things in the future which is gonna be exciting. And for a patient like yourself, um, you may be a candidate for this new procedure and I would urge you to contact us at Columbia or several of the other centers. There's one in Los Angeles, one in Atlanta, one in um, Seattle uh, that are similarly performing these procedures. Fantastic, and I know it's a, a study going on so we don't know about the results of it just yet. That's true. But is it something that um, has been, the results maybe in Europe have been encouraging? Do we have some data that shows that this valve is really working? We have some results in Europe with a different version where the valve is implanted through the apex or the tip of the heart. We're using only the so-called transfemoral, which means through a small incision in the groin. Um, and there have been now uh, more than 50 patient studies um, completed, and I can simply say that the results are very encouraging. Fantastic. Well, Dr. Leon, thanks so much. I hope that helped you, Francis. I knew it helped me. And again, Dr. Leon, thanks for everything you are doing. The pursuit you have taken on here of healthy heart valves is extraordinary. And I can't thank you enough on behalf of all the patients. And thanks for being here today. Our pleasure. And as we always say here, keep on ticking. <laughs>